What's up guys, this is Brayman. and today I'm gonna to show you how to replace the engine mounts on an E90, E92, or E82 rear wheel drive BMW. I'm gonna talk about the symptoms of bad engine mounts, some aftermarket options, and even something you can do to your stock engine mounts to make them more of a performance-oriented mount without too much NVH. The first thing you can do is inspect them visually. Look to see if the rubber is cracking or it just looks completely deteriorated or dry rotted. And you can also take a look at that aluminum engine mount arm there that rests on top of the engine mount. If it's sagged down and the arm is contacting that aluminum frame of the engine mount, the engine mount is bad. So it's a little bit hard to see from this angle, but you'll notice that the engine mount arm is actually raised off of the engine mount just a little bit. The other mount is a little bit harder to look at, especially with a lot of supercharger stuff here in this corner but we'll get to that later. The best way to determine if an engine mount is bad, in my opinion, is to actually get in the car, start it up, put your foot firmly on the brake, and you wanna have your hood popped so you can see that engine. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna keep your foot pressed all the way down on the brake, and you're gonna put the shifter into drive, and you're going to hit the gas pedal. So you're not gonna to wanna to move whatsoever because you have your foot on that brake. But while you're doing this, you're gonna peer over the dashboard and you're gonna look at that engine, or you can have someone else standing to the side of the car to take a look at that engine and see how much movement there is. There should be a little bit of movement as it rests into that engine mount, but your engine shouldn't be jumping up and down out of the engine bay. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. The engine mounts on my car are only a few months old, so that amount of movement you saw just now in the video is a normal amount. The reason I'm replacing my engine mounts, even though they're still good, is because I filled them with 3M window weld. There's another YouTuber who did a guide on this. I'll put a link in the description to his channel and his video on this. And it is a nice modification because you don't introduce too much noise vibration and harshness to your cabin. But I'm getting a little older now and any bit of vibration in the car kind of irritates me when I'm driving. So even though those added maybe 10% more vibrations, there's a couple things in the engine bay that it just vibrates enough to irritate me. So I'm pulling those out and going back to stock for a smooth, sophisticated ride. I have tried a lot of the aftermarket engine mount options and I really always end up going back to stock. I've tried the VTT metal inserts and those firmed up the engine a lot while retaining the OEM reliability of the engine mount and just stiffening it up. Unfortunately, they do add a ton of NVH and it was way too much even with just putting one side on my car. So I did those, went back to stock, and then I did the 3M window weld, which has been decent, but I just really don't care about a little bit more stiffness. I'd rather not have any vibrations at all. This guide will still apply even if you're not replacing with OEM components. If you want your car to ride like it did from the factory and you just want an OEM replacement, I'd recommend getting these Corteco engine mounts. They're the OEM supplier, and I haven't seen any premature failures. If you want to install upgraded engine mounts, it's going to be the same process, so just follow along here and I'll show you how to replace those engine mounts. Or if you want to install aftermarket engine mounts that turn your car into a mobile vibrator, you can still follow along because the process will be the same. As for tools and parts, you're going to need to do this job. Obviously, you're going to need your new engine mounts and you're going to need an e-torque set, which looks like this and also just the basic metric socket set, a 3 8 ratchet, some extensions, and a torque wrench. Not absolutely necessary, but an impact gun always makes things easier. And I have links to all these tools on my website. I'll link it in the description. Make sure to subscribe and stay posted. I'll be posting a video on every tool you should have in your garage as a BMW owner and go over budget options and what's the best bang for the buck. The last thing we're gonna need is this engine support bar, and this is going to hold up your engine while you unbolt the engine mount so that it can be supported by the frame of your car. Something every N5X engine owner should have if they plan on lifting their engine is an E36 tow hook. Now you're probably thinking, why do I need an E36 tow hook? I already have a tow hook in my trunk. Well, here's the difference. You can see on the E36 tow hook, we have a smaller diameter right here versus the N52 tow hook, it's flared at the bottom. So this is great for towing your car. However, when you install it on the engine, it doesn't see all the way. So this hole here is for supporting the engine. 
And I'm gonna show you what happens when you try to use your tow hook that comes with it from the factory. See how that edge catches right on the valve cover there? Problem with this is the threads are not fully engaged in the head. And if you try to lift up this engine, sometimes it works and sometimes it will rip that entire piece out and then you are totally out of luck. So here's where the E36 tow hook comes in. It has that smaller diameter body and I can thread this all the way down for a super secure fit and not risk breaking those threads off. So you can buy those on eBay, go to your junkyard, wherever. Um, it's a cheap thing to have and will save you a ton of headache. Now let's lift this car off the ground and get started. Now that I've got the car off the ground, I'm going to remove the air filter cowl and move some hoses and wiring out of the way because the back of this engine, we're gonna raise it up to get ourselves some space to work underneath the car. And we don't want anything getting pinched between the engine and the strap braces or anything like that. I'm also gonna disconnect this ground here that attaches to the valve cover so that we don't stretch it out. So this part will be different for you guys that aren't supercharged, but basically you're just gonna to need to remove your air box and the arm that connects the air box to the throttle body because our driver's head motor mount is gonna be straight down there. So all we need to do is free up this section so that we can get a socket down there and loosen the top nut. And coming down from the top here, you can see where that engine mount nut is. All the way at the bottom there. There we go. And so we're gonna take that 16 millimeter socket, we're gonna put it right on top of there and use a bunch of extensions and we're gonna loosen it up. Well, that's not good. This will be much easier for you guys since you don't have all this stuff in the way. Now we're only gonna to wanna to take one engine mount nut off at a time. That way the engine will tilt towards the side that's still bolted up and it'll give you a lot more room to work with on the side that you're replacing it. So we're not touching the passenger side at all for now. The next thing we need to do is remove this plastic splash guard. Always make sure to have jack stands and a wheel chuck fully supporting your car before putting your body underneath it. And watch your eyeballs because there'll probably be a lot of dust coming down off the splash guard. Right here is the driver's side engine mount. You can see those e-torques on either side holding it in. If you have this reinforcement bracket here, you're gonna have to remove that as well. It's all 16 millimeter bolts. And right here is the easy one. This is the passenger side. All right, now we're gonna pop off this reinforcement bar right here to give us access to the engine mount bolts. So it's just gonna be some 16 mil bolts and you might have to move these plastic pieces here uh, to get access to those. Now we've got that removed, you can see the e-torx bolts for the motor mounts, nice and accessible now. Now that we've got everything ready, let's get this engine supported. All right, and this is how it's gonna look once you have your engine properly supported. The legs sit nicely here. We're gonna tighten these up. And then we've got our E36 tow hook here. Now that our engine is fully supported, we can jack up the engine from the bottom and then we can start working on these engine mounts. So before I jack up the engine from the oil pan, I'm going to put a hockey puck on top of it here. I've also used a two by four, a small block of wood before. Basically, we just don't want 
the metal pieces of the jack to dent or put a hole in the oil pan. Now I'm going to zap off these E11 bolts on the bottom of the engine mount and it'll be free. Here's what that's gonna look like. And you're just gonna wiggle this engine mount out. This little black metal bracket here also needs to come out. You can see that uh, 10 millimeter plastic nut there. And then there's also one down there. And there's another one on top of it that I just always leave out because I don't really need it there. So let's get that popped out. And you can see our motor mount is already freed. We just need a little more space there. Now you can see all that room we've got up there to pull this engine mount out. success. Now we're going to do the opposite to install the new one. We're just going to sneak it in here. We're just going to sneak it in there. Come on. It's very hard to do this with one hand while I'm holding the GoPro with my dominant hand. So bear with me here. As you can see, we've got the new engine mount installed here. And the next thing we're gonna do is slowly lower down the engine and make sure the stud on top of the motor mount slips into that hole. And we're gonna do that before we do the bottom bolts. Now you guys really can't see what I'm doing here because it's deep in the engine bay. But all I'm doing is getting the nut back on the stud on top of this engine mount arm down here. And there it goes. The annoying thing on this side is the steering shaft is right in the way. So you kind of have to wrap your hands around it to get to the nut. And we're threaded. And we're not gonna tighten it down all the way until we have these bottom bolts in. But now that we have it hand tight, we're good to lower the engine and tighten up those bottom bolts. Now we're gonna torque the engine mount bolts on the bottom. Be very careful threading these because the engine mount is aluminum. So if you cross thread them, it's easy to damage the threads. The torque spec here is 28 foot pounds. And then we just need to reinstall that plate that we moved out of the way. I'll have to figure out a better solution for filming, doing stuff on another car. Maybe I'll lift that up higher next time because it's very hard to get this GoPro where I need it to, to show you guys what's going on here. Here's the finished product. We've got that plate back in place and we've got our engine mount installed. We've torqued both of these e-torx bolts. The Bentley says the torque spec on the top nuts on the engine mounts are 41 foot-pounds. I don't follow that. I've seen people break the um, stud by trying to torque it to 41 foot-pounds. So what I do is I just use a 3 8 ratchet and I go slightly past snug and I've never had a problem doing it that way. So I actually ended up deciding to keep this 3M window weld filled motor mount on the passenger side. What I'm thinking is this is the side of the engine that actually sees all the torque and the twisting motion. And then here on the driver's side, I'm hoping by keeping the stock OEM mount that's not filled, that I can isolate all of the vibration right there. And also that's right by the steering column and stuff like that. So I'm thinking maybe more vibrations travel in through the driver's side mount but the performance benefit should be mostly on the passenger side. So I'm just gonna leave the passenger side with the window weld in for now. I'm gonna test drive this and see how it feels because it would be nice to 
limit some of the twisting motion on acceleration, and then also minimize the NVH by keeping that stock mount, which is a common thing, not specifically with the window weld, but with aftermarket mounts, a lot of guys use just the passenger side. Don't forget to reinstall this ground. Also, do not forget to take this tow hook out before you close your hood. I have seen it so many times where people forget to take this out and then they slam their hood closed and they put a nice big dent in the hood. Let's talk about motor mounts. So here we have the stock Corteco OEM. You can see it has this air gap around the rubber. And when it's new and not worn, there's not really any movement here. And when it does get worn out, this part here can collapse and fall down. And that's when your engine mount arm will hit this area here. Um, it also can rip the rubber and then this whole piece will just jiggle around. And uh, usually you'll feel when these motor mounts are going bad, hitting the gas or letting off the gas because the engine will be jumping and then coming back down. So if you hit the gas pedal and you kind of feel a, a lurch, um, that's definitely something to look into is these engine mounts. Here I have a Corteco mount that I filled with 3M window weld. And I got this idea from Vehicular DIY. He's on YouTube, he posted this video years ago. And all you do is you fill that air gap with 3M window weld and also you fill up these holes here. And like I said earlier, I'll put his video in the description so you can check that out. And this is really the only option I've found that doesn't give a ton of NVH, maybe 10% increase in vibration. The other option, which is the best option for an OEM Plus daily driver, is the 335IS passenger mount. And uh, the only problem with that is it's four to $600 now. It used to be about $150 years ago, and there's no aftermarket supplier for them anymore. You only can buy genuine BMW. I haven't gotten my hands on those. That's the perfect setup that I'd want on my car, but I'm not spending that much for one engine mount. Beyond this are the polyurethane engine mounts, and they all increase NVH significantly. You can raise your idle RPM. If you're 22 RPD tuned, they can easily increase your idle RPM, which will lower the vibrations at idle. But on the poly mounts, you're really gonna have NVH no matter what you do. So for 99% of people, I would recommend sticking with new OEM. They feel good. They're a nice design, they're comfortable. They do a great job at isolating vibrations. So if you drive your car every day, you don't wanna worry about any vibrations, stick with OEM Corteco. If you wanna upgrade, but not get too much NVH, 3M window weld. And I had these previously on my last car and I ran them for about two and a half years and the window weld was still holding up after that. So it does last very well. So it is worthwhile if you just want a small bump in stiffness. That's all I've got for you guys today. Now you know how to replace your engine mounts, the symptoms and how to test if your engine mounts are bad and some options for aftermarket replacements. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.